And now for an interview with someone who changed the face of television forever. He began as a writer on this show. This is Jim Rockford. At the tone, leave your name and message. I'll get back to you. He went on to create this groundbreaking programme. Well, from the Rockford Files to The Sopranos and much else in between, I'm really delighted to be talking to David Chase in a moment. Before I do, though, I know you're on the line, David. Let's hear a clip of the critically acclaimed and greatly loved series featuring mobster Tony Soprano. I hope you apologise to him. For what? Tony, you promised him you were going to be at his swim meet. Oh, sh- I forgot. How could you forget? Something I had to do. Tony, he almost came in second. You should have seen his face when you weren't there. Yeah, well, I saw his face the other day when he had to go to the mall when I wanted to take him to the movies. What are you, six years old? Yeah, I said I'd try to be there. What is with you, Tony? This whole week, you're like an alien life form among us. There's nothing wrong. Thank you for sharing. You know what? Leave me the f*** alone. I'm exhausted. I'll make it up to him, the swim meet. So where were you? Did you go see Christopher at the hospital? Yeah, I I went to see Christopher at the hospital. Wherever you were, it couldn't have been more important than letting your son know that you care about him. No, only you care. F*** you. No, f*** you! David Chase, good morning. morning. Hi. Congratulations on the brilliance of that series. Do you mind telling me, you've probably told it a million times, but for our listeners here in Ireland, could you tell me about the beginnings of The Sopranos? I know at first, I think, was it meant to be on Fox, which is a network TV channel? Uh, It was supposed to be on Fox, um, but there was a history before that. I had first conceived of it as a uh, motion picture, a feature motion picture, with uh, Robert De Niro as the man who became Tony, and, and Bancroft as his mother. But I was dissuaded from doing it as a movie. People said there was no future for it. Um, Did the original idea, David, I mean, things are often slightly autobiographical, but did it come partly at all from your own upbringing, your own background, your own family? Uh, Quite a bit of it did, actually. Um, I mean, I'm an Italian-American, and so a lot of the, not all the cursing, but a lot of the (laughs) other stuff within the house, um, I was quite used to, including the foul moods and the... um, um, passive aggressiveness, <laughs> but um, the, my mother was a was a, a, a you know a troubling and troubled woman, um, and my wife had always said she was also very funny unintentionally. I think <laughs> um, my wife had always said we well, should write about her, and that's really basically what it came out of. From the time, um, David, you say wrote it as even as a, the idea for a feature to the time it actually went on air in HBO. How long would that have been? Would it have been years? Like was it a slow burner, or did it get picked up pretty quickly? No, I didn't. I didn't write it um, mm. as a feature. I, I conceived of it as a feature, but I was dissuaded from writing it. Okay. Um, but when I actually did, I wrote. I wrote it for Fox originally uh, in like nineteen, well, nineteen ninety five. And it went. It it Fox rejected it, and it made all the rounds of all the of all the networks, and they all rejected it. And then two years later, it came back to HBO, and that was so. Nineteen ninety seven, we made the pilot. It, it, when you look back on how massively successful it was, did you know at the time when you were writing it, when it was being filmed, that it could be this groundbreaking series or not? No, of course not. You have no no knowledge of that. I mean, you know, the television business is such that. You have an idea, and if you're very, very fortunate, you get to write, they pay you to write the script based on that idea. And then if you're even more fortunate, uh, very few, this happens to very few of them, let's say let's say they develop 100 scripts like that, they may shoot um, five of them. Mm. And if you're really, really fortunate, they will, um, they will choose one of those pilots, could be yours, to make into a series. Um, and then if you're sort of over the moon fortunate, uh, it goes on the air, and it, and it lasts longer than 13 episodes. So there's no, I mean, I, mm. the way I look at the whole thing is it's a very, very t- tiny little tar- tiny little bullseye that s- 
through quite a bit of luck. We just happened to hit. James Gandolfini, his casting as Tony Soprano. Were you ever? Were you involved at that stage in his casting? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, that's 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 a big part. Casting is a big part of the job. Did you realize when you saw him first play Soprano that he was it? He was he was he just was Tony Soprano. It was a difficult casting process because he um, he came in to read to audition for the part and he left in the middle because he felt he wasn't doing a good job. And he seemed to be really doing it well, but all of a sudden he was up and out of his chair and gone. And then uh, we had another we had another uh, session scheduled, which he didn't show up for. And then um, he came to my house finally and did it. And at that point, I could tell that he was... There were, there were two other candidates, but I, it was... And you never can tell what what the network is going to say, but it seemed to me like he was um, he was the guy. When you look back on that now, though, even the fact that he doubted himself, that he went off, he didn't turn up, did that almost add to his his chances of getting it? Because he almost was himself, slightly like the character. Well, you'd have to ask him. Yeah, but um, yeah. he's not around to ask anymore. I no, I don't know. That's possible. Mm-hmm. That's possible. I mean, you know, he's an actor, so perhaps it was all an act. I don't, I don't really know, or partly an act and partly real. But um, it certainly added to a, a kind of crazy mystique that he had. Yeah, I, I think I read a few years back an interview with you, and uh, and it stuck in my mind that did you say you saw him once on on the set or something? And he was sitting, and I think it was hot, and he had a handkerchief tied around his head, and his trousers rolled up, and you just thought that looks so like other relations of yours, that he, he was perfect for the role. Yeah, it was, that was after he was cast. Yeah, after, after he was cast, it was a hot day, and uh, we were on location in New Jersey. It's very humid and hot there in the summer. Hmm. And uh, I looked over, and he had, his, you know, he, had, he had, like, dress slacks on, but he had those rolled up with these very thin black socks underneath it and this handkerchief on his head. And that was the way my father would, sort of, on a hot day, my, and my uncles kind of comport themselves. And I thought, you know, then they were all in the building trades, stonemasons, carpenters, things like that. And I thought, mm. and then Jim comes out of the same kind of background. I think his father was a, you know, a cement guy. Mm. And um, I thought, wow, I, I really saw the connection. When you have such a big success in your hands, how difficult is it to bring such a series to an end? I mean, and who even makes that decision? Is it the audience? Is it the producers? How do you make that decision? Well, traditionally in television, um, before I think before the Sopranos, I mean every other show that I worked on, um, you didn't really write an ending into it. You were simply canceled. You heard one day this is going to be the last episode. You could see it coming. You would discuss it with them, but they never said, "Well, you need to tie things up." But um, in this case, they did, and it was about two years before the ending that Chris Albrecht, who was head of HBO, said to me, "You ought to think about how many more seasons you want to do and how the story is going to end." And so you know we went to work planning that. What are you working on at the moment? I'm working on a feature film for Paramount and uh, also another thing, a, a, a miniseries for HBO. Why are you in Dublin? Explain what you're doing in Dublin. Why are you coming to Dublin? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, I've been invited to uh, participate in a thing called Digital Biscuit, which yeah. I guess is... How it's great. It's great. Pardon me. It, it's great, actually. It's got a very good reputation. Yeah, and uh, I think I think the, I mean, I'm just doing a bunch of interviews like this, and there was a uh, um, there was a, uh, a Q and A last night at the at the ambassador's house. But I think the gist of, and I think we're going to get into it this morning. The gist of the whole thing is the application of new technology to storytelling. When you create a figure, um, David, like Tony Soprano. And I don't mean this as, you know, a critical question. Is it very difficult to create another figure who's going to be as iconic, as memorable, and maybe as loved by an audience? Well, yeah, but I don't think any writer goes about it that way. You know, I mean, uh, I don't think, you you know, you don't go about it saying, well, I'm going to try to create another figure as iconic. You just go where the muse takes you, and it might be somewhere where you know it's not going to be as, as, um, as iconic or even the least bit interesting. <laughs> but it's interesting to you for some reason, and so you go ahead and do it. I mean, if I was to do something about, um, I don't know, like a pickpocket or something like that, uh, or a police informant, mm. obviously it's not going to be very compelling or lovable. Is The Sopranos 
do you think it's what you'd like to be remembered for or do you think your best work has come? I read something last night, it was sweet, that said you're very much a glass half empty person. Is that right? Do you allow yourself celebrate the extraordinary success you had with that or not? I do. And I, I really, I'm very grateful for the success we at The Sopranos had. I know that I've been very lucky, that we, all of us on the show, were very lucky. I mean, the stars, I mean, there was a lot of talented people involved. I'm not going to deny that. This isn't like false humility. But the stars aligned. Um, they have to do that in order for something like that to happen, for it to be that big, you know, that, that much of a phenomenon. OK, well, look, David, David, we're pleased you're in Dublin. Congratulations on all your success. I wish you lots of success for the future, and thank you for chatting to me this morning.